So before we jump right into um, the business of the day, let me share my screen. Please confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen, everybody. Okay, all right, thank you very much. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks for turning up tonight. Um, I promise it's going to be an interesting one. Um, intend to show you through the ropes. If you want to become a cybersecurity analyst, and trust me, we are going to show you the fastest fastest route to getting into that career path in 2024. Um, first, I'd like to know where everyone is um, tuning in from. So if you can just type in your location in the chat box, it would be nice. If you can tell me your location in the chat box. Nice, we have people from Kaduna, UK, Nigeria, UK. Awesome. Good. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. I, I believe a lot more people will be joining us as we continue the masterclass. Um, now, why cybersecurity is one of the hottest tech careers in 2024, and how, how can you get in? First, let me start by telling you, introducing you to Tenalytics. Um, I believe a few of you might have been in our webinars before, and for those that are just joining, this is a quick introduction about Tenalytics. Um, we are an ed tech company. We help basically majorly Africans and people in the black community to um, learn premium tech skills by lowering their barrier into, into tech. So mostly we select the, the, the programs that are easy to learn and also that they can easily um, get a job as fast as possible. Our service offerings aim to build capacity and the understanding across different tech fields, including data analytics, business analytics, analysis, data engineering, data science, HR analytics, financial analytics, and of course, cybersecurity. And, and the entire data ecosystem, because there are also a lot of um, data-related careers that you can delve in once you have a good understanding of these ones that I've listed here. And um, so our facilitators that take our courses are top professionals from different sectors and reputable organizations, including Apple, Microsoft, McKinsey, Amazon, PwC, Deloitte, and the likes. Um, our courses are structured in a way that um, they make it practical and ensure that you get the optimal value. We make sure that you are able to get right on the job and start immediately. We have had students that have come from various backgrounds, and I'm going to be sharing some of them with you later. Uh, students that have that are medical doctors, lawyers that are not tech related at all. But then within four months, we're able to prepare them and get them ready for jobs in, in tech. I'm going to share a lot more about this during the course of this masterclass. And um, you will hear from the office marks yourself. So let me give you a quick introduction about our founder. Our founder is Adeza Suleiman. Is a data analytics expert, a data science consultant in the UK and the US, a business analyst, sorry, data analyst business performance at Sahara Group, um, also a data analyst consultant at FITC. He has close to a decade experience in data analytics and management consulting. He has worked in sports professional services, ed tech, energy, and automobile sectors. He has personally trained over 8,500 participants from, from when Tenalytics was founded to date. Then our co-founder is Efemina Ipo. Um, he's a data science contractor in the UK and also in the US. Um, a business data support leader at the post office uh, UK. 
global business system analyst at Teleflex Ireland, business intelligence developer at DPD Ireland. He also has experience in data analytics, data science, data engineering, and power platform de development. Efemina is a data scientist with close to a decade years of experience cutting across multiple sectors. Data, um, Efemina, I'd just like to mention here that Efemina and Adesa both didn't study anything related to tech in, in their university days. Adesa was, um, he did industrial chemistry. Efemina did economics. But along the line, he found themselves learning how to um, how to make decisions with data based off the, the career path they chose and then delving directly into data analysis. And of course, they've made um, a good career for themselves in that regard. So I'll be your co-facilitator today. I'm the Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Tenalytics. Um, I'm a marketing data analyst. I I'm also an independent consultant. I've worked with teams in France, Turkey, UK, in the US, um, Germany, Ghana, and Kenya. I'm a certified professional by the Digital Marketing Institute in Ireland with over eight years experience helping brands to find their unique voices online and grow exponentially. I've worked in industries, including air tech, FinTech, travel and tourism, real estate, I've spent an ample time of, uh, with software developers in the software development industry. I've worked with NGOs. I've worked with a few people in government and also worked with personal brands. Um, joining me will be Ade Dolako Akinde Inde. He is the head of cybersecurity governance, program management and compliance with Unity Bank PLC. There is a lot to say about Ade Dolako, honestly. I'm not even fit to lace his shoes. In 2023, he was internationally recognized in New Delhi, India, as a top 25 cybersecurity star of the year. He's a chartered accountant, master's in cybersecurity, University of Liverpool. He's going to do justice to this introduction when I hand over the button to him at some point in this presentation. So just um, get your, please, I'll advise you get a pen and a jotter to take notes because he is, this, he is the expert here. So he's going to take you through how you can get into cybersecurity, what are the things you need to learn, and how you can do it so fast. He has over a decade of experience, but that experience he's been able to, with the with analytics, create courses that you can delve in within four years and do almost close to what he's able to do after 10 years of experience. Um, so why are we here today? Today, I'm going to take you through why you should choose a tech career. I'm going to explain to you what are the opportunities in tech. Then Adidaco is going to be showing you why cybersecurity is one of the hottest tech careers in 2024 and how you can get in. Plus, he's going to show you a practical session on how to analyze a malware. You understand more in case that word seems maybe be new to you to understand more how you can how what a malware means and how to analyze it as a beginner in the coming in the coming slides then i'm going to be sharing the upcoming programs that we have for the february report at analytics then of course i'm going to share success stories and also the special discounts that you can enjoy just for being here with me on this master class um, so let's dive straight into it. Why choose a career in tech? Now, tech is an increasingly attractive career path for graduates and career switchers alike. To be honest, like I said, a lot of people that I know in tech today, they didn't have any background in tech. But because of the ease of transitioning to tech, it's becoming increasingly attractive. And aside that, everybody knows that the world is gone digital already. So it's just, there are a lot of opportunities in tech that it's just a no brainer for, for people that are futuristic to delve into tech and take advantage of what we have there. Now, 
I'll go through a few points to buttress the point around the how interest in, in increasingly attractive the careers in tech can be. There's a great work-life balance and flexibility. For most people that I know in tech, they work fully remotely. For instance, I myself have not been to the office since 2020. And that's because I'm lucky to find myself working in the tech ecosystem. So because businesses offer that flexibility and a great work-life balance, like I do not have to enter traffic, you know, get to or queue for buses anymore. I can always work from home as an independent consultant working, getting gigs on Upwork. I've worked with teams all across the globe um, because I find myself in a tech career. Also, um, there are great job opportunities in tech. I'm going to be sharing a document with you later on this slide that shows from the World Economic Forum, it shows basically the um, the direction that jobs would be looking, the kind of jobs companies would be looking for more in the next four or five years. And there I'll buttress my point on why cybersecurity is one of the authors that you should be looking at. Um, you don't have to have, again, you don't have to have a tech related degree to, um, to be in tech. That's a common misconception that you have to be a, computer science graduate. I am a computer science graduate, but like I said, if you may not finished um, as a industrial chemist, um, um, no, sorry, at days I finished as an industrial chemist, if you may not finished as an economist, and today they are, sorry? Today, um, they are both data scientists and data engineers. Um, so there was also the fantastic salary benefits, um, salaries and benefits in tech. You can find yourself working in the tech company where you'll be granted, you'll be given some level of equity into the business. And what does this mean? If the business starts at a, at, at a valuation of say $100,000 and you're there earning your, 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 your pay and with the equity you have, if tomorrow the company becomes valued at, at $100 million, you already automatically have some, some growth that's, that you accrue just for being a part of that company. So that's the, the, some of the benefits that there are sites that you get, you get paid good money working um, in, in the tech ecosystem. Then another important thing is that, that you get to work at the art of innovation and change. For instance, I worked on a project recently that an health tech project where we help to build a platform where you can actually consult a doctor without having to go to the hospital. I know there are a lot of things, a lot of apps that, that does this, but what makes this one unique is the fact that they are focused on conditions that people don't really, people are shy to talk about, sexual health conditions, mental health conditions, but you can easily use your application to um, consult a doctor and then get your drugs prescribed to you and then send to your to your house. So this is these are the kind of things that you'd be working on in the tech ecosystem. Things that really impact people that would make um, make a lot of um, that could improve a lot of lives. So these are the kind of things you work with if you if you find yourself in the tech ecosystem. So now I would like to buttress on the point I said about the growing the rate at which the um, opportunities in tech are growing. And I would buttress that point with this document here. And you can always assess it when we share this slide for those that register at the attendance for coming. By the way, I would like to advise that you check the chat. The attendance for this um, masterclass is going to be shared. So please do well to fill that form so that we can send you this. Um, document. So if you look at on the left here, on my left here, you see the top skills that you should be, you should be getting ready to find yourself in and also advising people that you care about to, to be thinking about transitioning into. And on the left, those are the skills that you, they might fade out in the next few years. 
And if you look at this on the top four, there yeah, is information security analyst, which is another name for cyber security analyst. You have business intelligence analyst. You have um, data engineers. You have database architects. You have um, you have AI and machine learning specialists. All of data related um, data related programs and courses or careers rather are what you find here. And these are the things you should be looking at to build a career, a successful career in tech, or even a, a generally a good future for yourself um, in the next coming years. You don't want to be found as a strategic advisor or maybe a materials engineer. These are things that will probably fade out in the next um, few years. So you want to find yourself on the left here and not here. So these are more reasons why so a lot of people don't have information and they say sometimes that information is actually far. So some people are probably in the university now training to be one of this. Meanwhile, you should be on this other side. Um, and these are some of the, these are the programs. If you look at all the programs you have here, about nine, 10 of them are what we have at Analytics as our programs are presently running that you can join us in. So I'll paint a scenario quickly to show you the importance of cybersecurity and how it affects everybody in their daily lives and why you should be thinking about it as a career path for the future. So I'm going to use my guy here, Aldo. His name is Aldo. I'm sorry if anybody goes by that name here. Yeah, this is not intentional. Um, but I'll use Aldo to paint a scenario of what cybersecurity is all about, why it is very important and why you should be one of those that would be um, helping to tackle the issues around cybersecurity in the future. In fact, the future starting from now. So Aldo shops at, he shops from shoppingcart.com. Um, Aldo has, he has saved his credential on the website to enable a hassle-free experience. So one day Aldo received an email that is eligible for a discount on that same website. So, and in order for him to receive the coupon code, he has to impute a few credentials. But it, it didn't seem like, it didn't seem fishy to him that, and he filled the, you know, he filled whatever it is they asked for him in the email, and he gave some verification and all of that. But immediately, a large amount was swiped out of his account. To relate this to some of the, Incidences we've heard of in, in this part of the world is when someone just called you from calls you from somewhere and says, send a code that gets to your phone now and blah, blah, blah. And you immediately send them a code. And before you know it, your, your money is gone. So how, how did this happen to Aldo? The email he received was actually fake because some hackers have been able to gain access, on unauthorized access into shopping, shopping cart um, data and use that to send out all these, um, these emails to their, their, their customers and such. This type of attack is called the cyber attack. And the people that carry out these attacks are hackers. We've seen a lot of them in movies and, and the likes. So what do you think Aldo could have done to prevent this attack. You could have prevented it with the help of cyber security. So this is where cyber security analysts, information security analysts come in and why their work is so important. Everyone of us here will probably have heard the story about someone being maliciously attacked, their money being stolen from their account or, or the likes. If you do, if it doesn't happen to you before, it'll probably happen to one or two people. So this is why we need cybersecurity experts. And the whole thing that happened there is, is I'll use that to define cybersecurity, which involves techniques that help securing various digital components, including your email, your phone, your laptop, and what have you, your networks, your data, and computer systems from unauthorized computer access. So there are various attacks that could have happened to that Aldo could have been exposed to, which is malware attack. Like I mentioned, Adi Dolako is going to give you details on what all of this means. And then phishing attack, fraudulent emails. Sometimes you see emails from people that you don't know. When they tell you there is 
some money somewhere from Saddam Hussein that he needs to claim and they need you to come and help them claim it, blah, blah, blah. Some of those emails, fraudulent emails that he used to lure you in and then swipe out money from your accounts. And there's also the man in the middle accounts where they take over your IP address. This is when you go somewhere and you see a free, um, a free Wi-Fi and you just jump on it before you know they use that to attack you. Then of course, password attack. There are people that still use things like one, two, three, four, five as their password or A, B, C, D, E as their password. So it, people can easily access all of this and use it to, um, to attack you and steal your information or steal things that are of value to you. Now, there are a few practices that um, Aldo could have implemented to prevent an attack. One of them is installing a firewall to safeguard the network by filtering what goes out and what comes in into his network. There is the Onipot. This is a, this is a dummy computer system where you have a dummy computer somewhere where the, you leave that vulnerable for hackers to jump on. Meanwhile, you have your actual system that is well defended and they can't actually get to that. So you just use that as a decoy to get them busy doing whatever they need to do while you have your actual system working. And also advisable to have a unique alphanumeric password, like use a combination of alphabets, um, special characters, numbers, where you have password. Then of course, antivirus, this has been there for, for ages, but then there's a need to update and do all of that. Then also most importantly, avoid emails from unknown senders. So if you don't know any someone that, if you don't you opt, opt in for an email from anybody and they send you one, you should be careful opening them or clicking on links that you find on those email addresses. Also, organizations also are experienced um, cyber attacks. Um, there are a lot of technical words here that they are too heavy for my mouth, but I didn't I believe I did a lot of do justice to them. You have the advanced persistent threat, APT. This is when hackers gain okay. access to a network for a prolonged period of time. Um, then there's the distributed denial of service. This multiple attack multiple targeted attacks with a flood of network, then the SQL injection attack. So I think I have a brief knowledge around this where they, they type in some code into your database directly from your website and use that to gain information from your website. So for, for businesses, this is a big challenge for a lot of organizations. That is why they need seasoned cybersecurity experts that could help them identify threats and immediately help them neutralize them. This is something that's that's a big major, major problem for a lot of it. In fact, from our environment and where we see a lot of what a lot of guys do in terms of um, some of these things that I don't want to go too deep into. You know that a lot of businesses will actually need um, a level of security to protect themselves now and um, in the future. So there are multiple roles. So when you see cybersecurity, you might think that it just ended. There are multiple roles related to the cybersecurity field. Some of them are ethical hackers. These are people that actually go into your system and try to hack you, like the normal, the bad hackers. They will try to hack you as an ethical hacker to see where you're vulnerable and quickly help you tighten those um, roles so that um, you don't fall, fall victim. Then the security architects, they help you build your structure such that it is not easily penetrable by, um, by the bad guys. Then the information security analyst, we have the cyber security engineer, the network security engineer, of course, the chief information security officer. They, they are they're usually entrusted with the overall security of an organization. Um, so now to the meat of the, of the web, of the masterclass itself, I'm going to hand over at this point to oh. Adi Dolako to um, take it from here. All right, thank you very much. I did a lot of this. Ebele, can you unmute Adi Dolako? All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, thank you. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, wherever you are joining from, uh, good afternoon, good evening. 
and uh, if you can hear me uh please drop uh, something in the comment section and say yes 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 i can just drop a comment and say yes i can all right yes yes all right good all right let me share my uh, my screen my slides and then we can uh, all right okay can um can you give me permission to share i can't uh, seem to find Okay, um, Emily, can you please? Sorry, please come again. Okay, I would like to share my uh, my slides. Yes, you can. All right. All right, and we are back. All right, so uh, please confirm you can see uh, my slides. Yes, we can. All right, yes, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. Sorry, you're muted. Hello, I did the Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. So why cybersecurity is one of the hottest uh, tech, tech careers for 2024 and how you can take advantage. That is basically what we are talking about today. And uh, we're going to take you some uh, practical sessions. Thanks to uh, Olawale uh, for that uh, introduction. In fact, uh, you talked uh, about some of the cyber security issues, right, that we have. We talked about man in the middle. We talked about SQL ejection. We talked about phishing, social engineering attacks, all right? So these are the issues. And um, for as much as, um, you know, the technology keeps evolving, all right, we'll, we'll be having need for cyber security uh, analysts like you. And that is the reason why you need to key in all right into uh this great opportunity all right so i'll talk about myself uh briefly and then i will we'll talk about uh the most sought after careers in the world of which cyber security is one of them then we'll talk about the top 10 emerging cyber security threats for 2020 2030 the steps that you need to take now, the roadmap to getting in, the models that we're going to cover during the class itself, the cybersecurity class. Then we'll take a global cybersecurity outlook for 2024, and then we'll take, you know, take you some practical sessions on how we can analyze malware. All right, so uh, who is Ali Dolapo? Okay, so um, I'm so glad to. Uh, when I when I hear um, you know testimonies about people that did not have um, you know that background, 
all right, in cyber security, all right, and today they are doing cyber security. Adeiza, all right, is one of them. And uh, even myself, I didn't, I didn't study computer engineering or computer science or economics in school. I studied accounting, all right. And it's not because, oh, maybe I didn't know accounting, all right? Okay, so let me just take, it, take you through my profile, all right? So I graduated with a, a 2-1 from, in accounting from Lagos State University uh, in the year 2008, and I completed my NYC program in November 2009. I began my career at AO of Kwane Yehanko. So for those of us that know audit firms, all right, uh, more, more, more like uh, medium size, small size kind of audit firm. So I actually worked as an auditor, all right, in two audit firms, okay, firms of chartered accountants, as an audit trainee, and then subsequently uh, as an audit senior. In 2011, that was the turning point in my career when I transited um, into IT. Okay, but this time around, the auditing aspect of IT, you know, IT audits. So that was when I joined Zenith Bank, okay, as, a, as an experienced hire. Then I gained experiences in uh, identity and access management, data analytics, e channels audit. So for me, I did not transit directly into cybersecurity. I started with, you know, the, from the IT auditing part of it. And today, I'm glad to tell you that I'm doing cyber security. So it was in First Bank, when I moved to First Bank as a senior banking officer in 2017, all right, that I moved into a cyber security role, all right? I was promoted to an assistant manager. I also worked with, um, I also worked um, uh, with Digital Encode as uh, cyber security and compliance advisory manager before my current role at Unity Bank PLC as the head of governance, program management, and compliance when it has to do with uh, cyber security. So I act as a deputy CISO, and um, uh, like Olawale introduced me, to the glory of God, I was, uh, I, I was globally recognized in 2023 20, as a top uh, 25 cybersecurity staff of the year, all right, in India. I'm a fellow of the Institute of Channel Accountants of Nigeria and a fellow of the Institute of Management Consultants Nigeria. Among other certifications that I have, I have a double master's from University of Lagos, uh, where I studied management, and also University of Liverpool, where I studied uh, uh, cybersecurity. So, uh, these are some of the associations I belong. I belong to ICANN, Body, ISC Square, ISACA, PCB, PMI, and uh, ACF, and also IAPP, to mention but a few. All right. So, and uh, basically, what I will be using my time to do uh, in the course of the cybersecurity class is not just to train you, but also to mentor you, to coach you. Because see, when you have a mentor, when you have a coach, what it does basically for you is that it makes your journey uh, shorter. It makes your journey easier, all right? Instead of you struggling and struggling and not knowing the direction to take. So uh, if you go to Digital Confex website, you will see uh, amongst other people who, top people, top CISOs who are recognized, I am also recognized uh, as a top cyber security star. So, now, moving on, uh, let's talk about most sought-after careers in the world today. So, uh, if you go online and search, do your search, just type most sought-after careers in the world, you will see that cybersecurity, all right, information security analyst is one of them, is one of them. So, if you are mentioning software developer, you're talking about is data scientist, a web developer, but, but, but if you talk about the top 10 today, you, cyber security is definitely one of them. All right? Now, why do we, ha why, why do we have opportunities in the cyber security space? It's because we have problems. 
And you see, when there are problems, there are opportunities there. There are emerging threats. There are uh, issues in the cyberspace today that uh, need your skill, that need your competence. All right? So number one is, I'll talk about supply chain compromise of software dependencies. A, a, a good number of uh, companies today, they make use of third-party softwares, softwares that were that were not internally developed. And you never know the kind of Trojan, the kind of malware that is embedded in such software. You can see that that is an issue. So as a cybersecurity analyst, you, you will have a skill. What this class will do for you is that it will teach you some skills that will, be, that will enable you to be able to identify issues, identify malware, okay, in solutions like that. We talk about advanced disinform disinformation campaigns, all right? Advanced disinformation campaigns. Uh, an example of this is a business email compromise, all right? And um, if I say I should share my, my, my experience, all right, in the hands of uh, the bad guys who have tried the possible best to get to me but because because they didn't know who they were dealing with of, of course i had to even tell them that come on go and uh, go and try harder all right so business com com business email compromise is that a uh, technique that is used by a cyber attacker all right to get into uh to, to steal your money all right to steal your information assets to get in to get access unauthorized access into your network all right as little as it is it can be an email but it can have a phishing link that when you click on it something is going to run in the back end and that might just be a true that it can also be a ransomware number three is the rise of digital surveillance authoritarianism loss of privacy today we have countries that are proposing into other countries matters all right, we have the Ukraine, the Russia war, cyber war happening here and there. All right, I will show you um, something briefly for you to see how this plays out in real life. Just give me a moment. Let me share um, something with you for you to see that this is happening in real life. Just give me a second. Let me show you how this is happening in real life. All right, okay. All right. So now this is a live cyber threat map. You can see, and uh, you can see attacks from United States to India, from France to Poland. All right. You can see attacks even within Italy. All right. From Canada to Mongolia. This is a live cyber threat as it is happening in real time so the cyber warfare is real is real and this tells us that you know um, organizations they are not exempted organizations are not exempted from these cyber attacks whatever happens at the international at the international stage also affects what happens at the national and of course affect the organizations and that is why organizations need your skill. Organizations need your competence. All right. They need skills. They need that. The skill, skill gap is one of the major problems that we currently have. And that is why you need to take advantage. So I'll, I'll stop sharing and let's go back to uh, my slides. All right. So it's happening in real time. All right. Now let's continue. <clears throat> Human error and exploited legacy systems within cyber uh, physical ecosystems. The next is targeted attacks, targeted attacks enhanced by smart device data. Next is lack of analysis and control of space-based infrastructure and objects. Next is rise of advanced hybrid threats uh, we have skills shortage, yes, that I mentioned. Then nine, we have cross-border ICT service providers as a single point of failure. 
and lastly but not least uh we have artificial intelligence abuse so many uh people so many bad guys have used technology they have abused the use of technology and that's why in this class i will show us a few things all right i will show us a few things because when it comes to um um you know analyzing malware of okay um it, it's important for us to know that um uh because it's a large class uh, -huh, uh because it's a large class I also, i'm also very careful what i'm going to put out there so uh, i might just show us a few things all right so that uh, it won't get to the wrong hands all right so this is a report uh by enisa that european union agency uh, uh for cyber security now let's talk about the steps that you need to take now you know i'm so glad that Ola they mentioned something and it's it's so it's so it's so important if you don't get any other thing in this master class know one thing that you don't need to have a bsc in computer science you don't need to have a bachelor's in engineering from for maybe in mechanical engineering or computer engineering you don't need to even if your your first degree is an hnd if your first degree is a bsc in uh, even in yoruba or igbo language you are welcome to cyber security you can start and start today all right so education uh, you don't need uh, to get a cyber security education okay you sorry you need to get cyber security education by enrolling for courses to get you started ahead in 2024 so what would help you to achieve at 10 analytics is to help you grow your career and the the models are so prepared in a way that it takes you from the beginner stage all right through the intermediate and then the advanced level so you can see it's like you starting with your uh your your you know when you have um uh, uh when you go for a buffet before of all start with pepper soup all right uh -huh. or you start with fruits so that's how i want to take you take you through the class we won't just go straight to cryptography we won't just go straight to how uh to conduct a penetration testing we'll start with as uh, as uh, we'll take you back okay to the basics of computing all right because see the foundation is very important and you know that's why we are as we are telling you come as you are you don't need to have uh, a skill you don't need to have uh, a, 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 a bsc in it all right so we are going to teach you we are going to mentor you until you can stand on your own all right so uh, a degree is not a requirement all right so let's move on so now let's look at this career path all right and uh, what is going to it's it's it, it it summarizes all i've been saying in the previous slide if you look at this particular slide you have the entry level you have the mid career level the senior level and the security leader now at the entry level that is where you are coming in now you are coming in as because you are transiting all right from what you currently do and maybe you feel oh there is no uh you know some 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 uh, some, some careers you know there are, the opportunities are not there I'm telling you, the opportunities are not there. But when you come into cyber security, the opportunities are so enormous. They are so enormous. All right, and uh, and in fact, another another aspect of cyber security is data privacy. In fact, let me not even go there because that one is another is another uh, area of opportunity for you. All right. So now, looking at entry level. All right, you have you can become an associate cyber security analyst. You can come in as an associate network security analyst. You can come in as a cyber security risk analyst. You can also come in as a SOC analyst. SOC stands for Security Operations Center. All right. Now, if you look at the education, what do you have there? It tells us bachelor's in business or liberal arts. What does that tell us? That you don't need to have a degree 
in what in cyber security. In fact, even if you don't have any degree at all, just come in, just come. You are free to come. You are free to you are free to join uh, this moving train. Now, at the end of this cyber security class, we will now we we'll look at okay, what are your uh, your your strengths? Where you can and what is going to prepare you? In fact, after the class, you are free to go and take an exam. You can you are free to go and take a computer security plus exam because we would have taken you through the modules that has 12 uh, solid uh, courses, all right? Now, when you join, and after the program, when, when, you, have a, when you get a cyber security job, you can earn as much as for, between $40,000 and $75,000. Hello? You, have, you, have, you, you, you can earn as much as that, $75,000. Now, if you are in Nigeria and you are doing a remote job in UK, or in the US, convert that to Naira. You can imagine how much that is. That's a lot of money. So uh, with um, coming as an ent entry level, uh, you can imagine what you start to what you what you start to gain. So that is so, and you can and then you can begin to what to develop you know your career uh, as you move in. Okay, through the mid career, you can become uh, you, you can become a forensic analyst. You can become an application security. That's when you now say, okay, I want to now understand how to um, um, carry out a security assessment on an API. All right. Uh, you want to do uh, offensive security. Offensive security. You can be now begin to specialize, but now you don't need to specialize. Now you need to have a foundational knowledge of what cyber security uh, is all about, and then that is how you go to move uh, and grow in your career. At the end of the day, you can become a CIO, you can become a chief information officer, you can become a chief cyber security architect, you can become a chief cyber security strategist, you can also become a chief information security officer, a CISO. Now, the next step that you need to take is for you to build practical skills, all right? And I always tell people something that willingness is not enough. You need to have the ability. You need to have the ability. Ability is better. All right. When you are able to do something, you might be willing and then you, you stay at that spot for a long time. All right. But when you are able to, to showcase your skills, all right, it, it, it's much better. And that is what the Analytics uh, Cybersecurity class will do uh, for you. Then I also encourage you be intentional about building your skills, be intentional about building your career. Your foundation and how solid it is will determine, all right, what you are able to build on it. If you have a solid foundation with us, or when you have a solid foundation with us, you can you can you can grow through the ranks and get to the top of cyber security. So you need to be answered. That's all the truth of the matter. All right, you need to be hands on. And what we're going to do for you in this class, we are going to uh, 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 take you through the process of setting your a, a, a home lab. You have your own lab. I always encourage that you don't use your office of, uh, official system. Have your own personal laptop that you can use to practice various cybersecurity tasks. All right, you can experiment uh, with tools like Wireshark, like Metasploit. Bob suit and other uh, penetration uh, testing tools. So I encourage you take advantage, all right, of this uh, class, so that you will not be left uh, behind. All right. Now another thing that you are going to gain when you join this class is what is networking. Is networking. Why? Because it's going to be a, a robust class, all right, that has that that has people connecting from all over the world. All right, so you are able to connect with more than 50 people. You know, imagine when you have more than 50 people you know, in your circle, you know, it, 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 you know, opportunities can come from, uh, from, you know, from your network just by what information sharing. All right, so uh, there will be ac access to valuable information, online communities like cybersecurity. So we also expose you to other 
cyber security communities that you can join all right uh, i belong to isaka uh, i belong to isc square and niger Secom. all right so but again at the why the why the program is going on nobody will tell you you too you will know for yourself that something has has really changed about you all right now another step that you need to take all right uh now is for you to uh, have an internship and volunteering uh, uh 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 you know kind of uh agenda for the year 2024 all right so i want to encourage you uh to seek internships or entry level positions never mind okay you just start start with that entry level oh you might be saying oh i was at you know this particular level in my uh, in, in my current place you might be uh, a, a senior like me i was an audit senior where i was all right uh -huh. but i was still i, I still got a, a a good deal when i when i ventured when i came into it all right so uh start you can start with internship you can start with entry level positions to, for you to gain real world experience all right uh -huh. and the good thing is that uh lots of companies they go into that that pool of interns and then they pick talents all right from there so uh so make that sacrifice all right but then start the class uh first start the class first so what we will do for you at analytics is that we are going to provide you with the platform that you need to scale up all right now the next is for you to develop your soft skills develop your soft skills uh, what, what what importance okay of what importance is it if you are so technical and then you are not uh skilled in terms of com you can't communicate even in simple terms what you know all right so uh we're going to take we're going to teach you all right how to uh, develop strong rating and verbal communication skills because in cyber security you need to be able to explain complex concepts all right complex concepts all right then your ability to showcase uh your skill to be able to think critically and solve problems uh efficiently so and again at analytics we will help you to develop those skills we will help you to fine tune your cv just like a days i said we're going to help you to fine tune uh your cv because see your CV is a representation of who you are. Before you go for an interview, all right, before you attend that interview, your CV goes before you. So it has to be packaged in a way that it will market you. It will sell you well to your recruiter, all right? So we will help you and we'll support you in achieving that, all right? Um, next is... Uh, next is for you to stay informed. Information is very key, just like Olawale said. All right, information is power. So, in the world of cybersecurity, what was a vulnerability yesterday may not be a vulnerability today, because uh, from time to time, um, manufacturers, OEMs, we call them uh, original equipment manufacturers. From time to time, they do what they update. All right, they update their OS, just like you have Apple. All right. Uh, why do we have uh, 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 upgraded Apple products today? Why do we have upgraded versions of Microsoft uh, 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 Office today? All right. It's because or OS today is because they identified, all right, vulnerabilities in previous versions. So the current versions are actually what enhancements. All right. So you need to stay informed of those things happening around you. Okay, don't say, oh, I'm not interested. You can't be in cyber security and you're not interested, you know, you are not showing interest, you know, about what is happening uh, at, in the cyber security space. So uh, you stay informed about the latest cyber security threats and vulnerabilities, all right? Um, in, in my industry, we encourage information sharing, all right? This knowledge is important and it's crucial for interviews. Imagine you go for an interview today and they ask you, what are the tell me about uh you know top five uh cyber security threats that you know and you are looking you can't even explain what a vulnerability is 
you can't differentiate between a service a, a vulnerability a threat and a risk or maybe an exposure you should be able to uh you be able to explain all of these concepts when you go for uh, interviews all right they also you need to be able to understand emerging technologies and trends because uh it is very very um important then before we go into the next slide which is uh, i'm going to be talking about the roadmap to getting in i also want, i also encourage uh my students when you attend uh interviews use uh the star method the star method uh tells you uh it it, it, it enables you to be able to situate things in fact it makes your response so structured in a way that even you you you, you, you will not lose you will not lose track okay of what you are saying now this time method you start with the situation when they ask you oh tell us about uh, just uh, uh, just uh, like uh, Olawale mentioned talked about uh, 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 a scenario all right a scenario you can talk about a situation now after that situation what was a task okay that was assigned to you it may be a team but you speak you speak more about what uh, areas or what tasks that you did, the actions that you took and the results that you got, all right, uh, while also encouraging, uh, ensuring that there's teamwork and synergy, all right? So now let's talk about roadmap to getting in. Now, this class starts next month. Next month is just a few days away. By February 2024, we're going to kick, kick off uh, this class, all right? So you take the cyber security class, and like I said, it's 12 module course that prepares you for the opportunities uh, lying ahead. If you if you don't prepare, don't expect, you need to prepare first. When you prepare for opportunities, when opportunities come, yes, you can grab. But when you don't prepare, opportunities can, can be staring at you like this and you are, you, you are not opportune to even grab them. So I encourage you, please key in into this opportunity next by may 2024 by my projection by my projection you have joined um sorry you have gained a, a practical experience and confidence you that you did not know what a malware is by may 2024 you would have gained so much not just malware you would have gained so much all right uh experience and confidence when you speak you are speaking with confidence and by june by my expectation by my speculation you are already getting your returns on investment all right your returns on investment and by july 2024 you have already landed a cyber security role all right then by december 2024 which is just 11 months away you look back with gratitude and you say ah thank god that i did that i took that decision at the beginning of this year so as at this time you don't relax too all right okay you don't relax you keep doing and you keep upscaling cyber security and generally the tech, the tech space is so competitive all right that is why you need to keep doing some certifications uh you know learning new skills all right so by then by 20, by december you are, are looking at oh i want to take this exam how to write computer security clause how to do uh cc how to do CEH, or maybe you want to do cyber security fundamentals, you know, as you, uh, we will guide you into uh, all of those stuff, all right? In fact, some of the exams, some of these courses, uh, they are free. So I would, I, 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 I would, uh, I will share those things, uh, those things with you. Then there's this quote that interests me by Walt Disney said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Some of us we have been talking and talking oh i will do it i will do it uh -huh. this is not the time uh to talk this is the time to do all right uh -huh. like in our common palace at the beginning of this we say no grief for anybody me i will say no grief for procrastination so don't uh uh don't procrastinate basically all right so uh take advantage take advantage take advantage now the next is for us to look at the modules what are those modules that we're we'll talking about? Now we'll, we'll be introducing you to cyber security. We're we'll talking about the foundation of computing and networking. All right. We'll be talking about the principles of information security. 
which is CIA. C, confidentiality. I, integrity. A, availability. Now, we we'll also be talking about offensive and defensive uh, cyber security. You see, cyber security is uh, is majorly, or let me not say majorly. It is. It has a class. It has a category, or it has two categories. You can categorize it into the blue team or the red team. So it depends on which side you are. You, you, if you belong to the uh, to the to the red team, that is you are offensive. If you belong to the blue team, you are what on the defensive. Uh -huh. We also have the purple team, but that one is in between. Uh -huh. But offensive cyber security is looking at oh, you want to be a penetration tester. You want to be uh, a red team person. You want to be attacking. Or your company deploys a software. You do what you carry. You carry out attacks on that to see whether there are uh, exploitable vulnerabilities. Not all vulnerabilities are exploitable, so you need to also know that. All right. Uh -huh. But on the blue team, you are you are the one doing like a a a a a a, 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 a megat. All right. You are the one defending, like the sock. All right. When you, if you when you belong to the security operations. Oh, you are defending. You are, your your work is mainly monitoring. You are monitoring if there's any threat or any cyber attack coming, so that you can do what you can block it. All right. Now, other modules that we're talking about, we're talking about uh, cryptography basics, cyber threats, and attack vectors, uh, network security, endpoint security. We we'll look at web and app like application security, cloud security, cyber security policies, and compliance then we'll also take you through uh, the career and certifications. So not to worry, we'll begin, like I said, from the beginner stage, we'll take you through intermediate and advanced, all right? Now, um, um, Olawale, we, we, we speak to this, I, I was talking about the World Economic Forum, so I'll allow you to speak uh, to this, all right? But I, ha I have a few things to show us, all right? Uh, I have a few things to show us, uh, on the global cyber security outlook for 2024. Please pay attention. This is, if you don't get any other thing, please, I want you to pay attention now, all right? Now, these statistics, all right, I didn't, I didn't manufacture it. It is something that uh, was produced at uh, the beginning, at last this year, this January. And the that report speaks to two, two broad uh, issues, okay? Uh, two broad issues, all right? One is cyber inequity, cyber inequity, all right? Then the other is emerging technologies, emerging technologies. Now, under cyber inequity, skills gap and talent shortage is one of the issues. It's one of the issues in the, in the uh, outlook report, according to World Economic Forum. In fact, if you also go to Forbes, Forbes also mentioned a uh, skills gap, all right, and talent shortage as one of the things that we should be looking out for in 2024. What does that tell us? There are opportunities. There are opportunities. Next is insufficient understanding of cyber vulnerabilities. A whole lot of people don't even understand you know, what all of these things are. Oh, vulnerability, what is a vulnerability? So people don't know, all right? A vulnerability is what? Is a weakness. It's a weakness in a system. A vulnerability is a weakness in your process. It can be a process. It's not just, it's not just uh, oh, it's, it's a system. No, it's not just malware. It can even be a vulnerability in your process, it's a loophole, all right, that can be unnessed or used, all right, uh, by a, a cyber attacker. Now, another cyber inequity is the rise of cyber crime. Rise of cyber crime. And that is the more reason why organizations will need your services. All right? Now, another thing is expanding attack surface. Expansion of the attack surface. So many channels that are plugged into uh, an organization's network. And the more channels that you have, Oh, you have a mobile banking, you have an internet banking, you have an agency banking, you have this, you have that, you have this. You have, you have so many products that you are deploying and marketing 
to your customers. As long as you have all of these products rolled out, they are what? They are potential attack surfaces. That is the more reason why those that kind of organization will need your services. And now to paint a scenario before I continue, you have um, you have all of these attack surfaces era things happening, and you don't have a security operation center. It is it is a taboo for you to have, you know, you you have so much so much going on in the in the in the in the area of business, and you don't have people that are monitoring a command center where people are sitting and they are monitoring, checking the traffic, checking the network. Oh, is there any uh, any bad guy that wants to penetrate into our our fire our firewall? You understand? Do you have an IPS, an intrusion prevention system? Do you have an IDS? An intrusion detection system all of these things they have to be in place all right aha uh -huh. so and again i always say this cyber security is not just about tools you can have tools and not know how to use the tool very well so beyond tooling it, 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 the, the work is in you implementing that tool implementing frameworks we have so many frameworks you have the CIS framework, we have the ISO framework. In fact, the CBN, if you are the in if you are in the CB, if you are in the bank industry, the CBN to us a risk-based cyber security framework. So that framework, how well are you able to interpret the content of it and implement? That is what cyber security is. It's not just about buying tools, all right? It's more about you understanding how to uh, make use of it, how to fine-tune it. The next is increased data privacy regulation. In fact, I wanted to, I will share something with us and I'll drop quickly uh, in the chat. All right, it's something that is so interesting to me. So if you are in Nigeria, all right, if you are in Nigeria, remember uh, that the president, all right, the president, when he came into office, the first thing that he did, in fact, he mentioned it during his, uh, is a, a speech all right he talked about nigeria data protection act data protection is not a very big thing it's a very big thing so i would i would just um drop something for us um i don't know if i have the permission to drop it okay I've, okay i'll drop it quickly here i'll drop it quickly here now now if you if you if you go through what i just dropped now those are fines fines that an organ that an organization can pay once you have uh data subjects that are uh, more than ten thousand you are you are what you are culpable to do or to pay penalty maximum penalty of two percent of your annual gross revenue of the preceding year so we are in 2024 now all right if uh you are audited or if there is and if if there is a data breach all right if there's a data breach you if that organization that we call them data controller you are you can pay as much as two percent of what of your annual gross revenue for last year all right aha uh -huh. or a payment of what 10 million naira so which one is which whichever one is higher so if 10 million is higher you pay 10 million if the two percent of your annual gross revenue is higher that is what you will pay as long as you are you have what you have more than 10,000 data subjects now if your data subjects they are less than 10,000 the maximum penalty you will pay is 1% 1% of your annual gross revenue of the preceding year or you pay 2 million which one whichever one is higher of course organizations they, they trust what as possible to avoid this kind of fines. So that is why they need you. Organizations need your services in the area of data protection, data privacy. Now let's look at the other side, the emerging technologies. We have the OT. In fact, it's, this, is, this is beyond just a buzzword, okay? OT focuses on hardware and software that detect or causes a change through direct monitoring or control of industrial equipment 
processes and events. So today, in fact, it's be it's it's going beyond just oh, I mean the financial in the financial sector. No, even companies that are into manufacturing, like Dangote, like Boa Cement, all right, aha, they are taking cyber security very important. They all have they also they all, they, they also have CISOs. They have CISOs. They have security analysts. Okay, in the area of what operational technology. Now imagine uh, uh, the power sector. Now, the power sector. There's an intruder that is able to, you know, cause a breakdown. That is able to uh, uh, run a malicious script that distorts power, and, and for maybe for like uh, 24 to 48 hours. Yes, it's possible. It is possible. It is very, it is very, very possible that power is brought down by a bad guy. All right, so that is why uh, 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 cyber security is very important. Now, let's look at artificial intelligence, machine learning. These are emerging technologies, generative AI, sustainable technology, advances in Internet of Things, big data analytics, blockchain, cloud, quantum computing. All of these technologies, they are what? They are things that, they are technologies that we will do what? That have either direct or indirect impact, all right, on what? On skills gap, all right? Because not everybody understands what generative AI is. So there is a skill gap there. Oh, we talk about the rise in, of cyber crime. Because all of these technologies too, the bad guys are making use of them. Some technologies are still at the, at the infantry stage, all right? They have still not, they have not really you know, uh, fine tune that technology. So some there might be vulnerability in those kind of technology. So bad guys can leverage them and use them uh, for their advantage. All right. So let's move because of our time. Now, let's look at these cyber security forecast and trends. So I'll not uh, overflow this. All right. But uh, looking at this, what it just basically tells us is, is it's another chart that tells us that oh, the rise of privacy regulation. Yeah, so I won't really talk about it because it's, you know, it's, I've already talked about them. So it's just telling us that there are what? There are advantages uh, that you need to uh, tap into. Now, let's move to uh, the session here. How to analyze a malware, all right? Like I said, I'm, I'm also uh, a person under um, authority, all right? And um, uh, this class is a large class. All right, so and I don't try so to be careful uh, the people that are getting access to this kind of information, but I'll try as much as possible to uh, speak um, to some certain things and I will not mention some things until we have uh, the class uh, proper. But again, what is a malware? A malware is, um, is we, we can call it a malicious software. That is, it's, that is what you can... You, you, uh, is simply speaking, all right, it's a malicious software. So a malware is an executable or a binary that is malicious in nature. Okay? It is malicious in nature. As long as it is malicious in nature, it is a malware. Now, like I said, it can be used by attackers to perform a variety of malicious actions. It can be used to spy on a person. Okay, you can use it to spy on a person by using what a rat. We call that we call it remote access to. And examples of uh, remote access to we have the team view viewer, you have the AnyDesk, you have uh, the RDP. Okay, that's a remote desktop protocol. You have the Chrome desktop, uh, re Chrome remote desktop. You have the Go to My PC. You have VNC Connect. All right, even your Teams, your Microsoft Teams can also be used. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. So uh, key loggers too. Uh, okay, there are ways through which uh, 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 a bad guy, a cyber attacker, can actually spy on a target person. All right. Now another thing that um, is that that uh, that constitute a malware. All right, all right, or actions that can be performed by a malicious uh, person is data exfiltration. Okay, a malware can be used to what exfiltrate data. Once it runs in the back end your, on your system, 
it can it can it can it can steal uh, data or information. It can also be used to what encrypt data uh, or, or what or destroy data. Data encryption and destruction. An example of this is a, a ransomware. A ransomware is a malware. A ransomware is a type of a malware. All right. And um, what it basically does is that it encrypts. What that malware does is that it's going to encrypt your data. Okay. And when it encrypts your data, you that you are the original owner of that, of that data, you will not be able to have access to your data until you pay a ransom. That is basically what a ransomware. So it's a type of malware. Now, let's look at the types of malware now. Malware is sorted into further denominations. So it, you can sort it based on functionality. Trojan. So what Trojan does is that it disguises itself as a legitimate program. How many of you have watched, uh, if you have watched Troy, if you have watched Troy, say yes, I have. Just say yes. If you have watched Troy, it's, I'm going somewhere. Just say yes, I have watched Troy. Or yes. Aha. Aha. Yes. Okay, so now, if you have seen that movie, you know, uh, there was a gift that was presented, okay? That gift was a wooden horse, okay? It was presented as a gift, all right? That, oh, we are tired of fighting, we have surrendered, and all of that. So a horse was presented as a gift. It was a Greek gift. Now they opened the gates, all right? They opened the gates, and the moment uh, the city of Troy, then when they opened the gate, the horse, you know, was it was a wooden horse. So the gift was, of course, it was uh, rolled inside. And the moment the horse entered into uh, the, 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 the fortress, the next thing was that, you know, the soldiers, <laughs> the Greek soldiers, came out of the wooden horse. That is exactly how a Trojan is. A Trojan is, it is, um, it disguises, it looks, it is, it, it, looking at it, it does not look harmful it does not look harmful all right uh -huh. he said it disguises itself as a legitimate program so you can have a microsoft uh, uh, microsoft word running on your system maybe okay? it looks legitimate it's a microsoft application but it is not the original one so it's because it is not the original one uh -huh. It is possible that that Microsoft Word has a Trojan in it. All right. So that is an example of what of a a malware. Okay. So it can destroy and exfiltrate a data and can be used for spying. Another type is your remote access to your rats, and it allows the attacker to remotely access and execute commands on the system. So its functionality can be extended with modules like Keylogger. All right, let's move on. Uh, so what is malware analysis? Malware analysis is the process okay, of what? Of analyzing, of examining a malware. Okay, so if you, have, you can have a sample or a binary, and then what you do at the point of view examining that malware is to what? Extract as much information as possible from it. So the information that you, you extract will help you to understand the scope of the functionality of the malware, how the system is infected, and how to defend against similar attacks in the future. So the objectives of malware analysis is to, is to help us to understand the type of malware and the entire scope of what it can do. Like I said, the functionality. This malware, is it a keylogger? This malware, is it a remote access tool or a ransomware? Is it a Trojan? You understand? So that is what basically uh, that analysis, what it will do for us. Next is uh, how the system was infected. Was it when you clicked on a link, you know, was it when we purchased a laptop from a vendor? I've seen situations like that when you a newly purchased system 
having a malware. Yes, it happens. So that tells us that your third party vendors, you see why it's important for us to pay attention to the kind of the kind of uh, 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 stuff that we buy. The phone that you buy, where you are buying the phone from, do you know if it has a malware? The manufacturers, of course, when they produce it, do you know what they embedded in that phone that that has the functionality of what of even checking of 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 keylogger? Yes, that's what the keylogger does. So when you are typing your your banking app password, it is actually sending details of your banking app to a remote location. How it communicates with the attacker, that is also very important. And that is what also what we are going to understand. So it, it, we are going to learn processes that will help us to build up our defense in depth. So if it is through a remote access tool, for example, is it connecting back to a command and control center or connecting back to a web server? So this is what understanding the communication with the attacker is what it does. Now, the next is to exfiltrate useful indicators like registry entries, keys, and file names. So for exfiltration now, you know, this is what uh, these uh, antivirus companies, this is what they do basically. They exfiltrate useful indicators and then they use it to prevent or block uh, future attacks. Now, we are getting there closely. Uh, types of malware analysis. So it can be static, all right? It can be dynamic. It can be a code analysis. It can be behavioral. So if it is static, like as the name implies, the process of analyzing malware without executing or running it, you don't, you analyze and you don't execute or run any, any command. So the objective basically is to do what? Is to extract as much met, as much metadata from the malware as possible so examples are strings and pe headers then dynamic of course in this case you run all right the purpose of executing malware and analyzing its functionality and behavior so let's move on uh, to the next so in setting up our environment so the tools that will make use of will make use of a hypervisor okay which could be a virtual box or a vmware all right so you have that on your on your personal system all right and the reason why we say use your personal system is because so that uh if there is um uh it won't affect you know uh your your data that is sitting on your official laptop so make use of a personal system have a hypervisor maybe it's a virtual box or a vmware then also uh we'll be making use of windows 7 vm 32 or 64 bit but we prefer uh 64 bit uh uh you know for uh the exercise then a flare vm so windows malware analysis distribution so it's usually uh the flare vm comes pre-packaged with all the tools that we we'll need for malware analysis all right uh -huh. So, but again, uh, at the point of us setting up the environment, make sure you disable your window updates and uh, Windows Defender on your analysis uh, uh, VM. Then again, you set up your sandbox environment for malware analysis. So, sandbox environment is like your testing environment. All right, like a testing environment. So you can use uh, you can use Ubuntu, all right, as your host operating system, and it's recommended to have your host OS different from your guest OS, okay, in case of an accidental execution, all right? Then, in setting up your uh, sandbox environment for malware analysis, make use of your personal laptop, all right? Your operating system, Windows, Windows 10 uh, as a base system. Uh, your RAM size should be a minimum of two gig, all right? Uh, most some systems come, up, come with uh, one gig, but you can upgrade to two gig or four gig RAM, all right? Then use a different network se segment or a subnet. Install all the tools needed, for example, your debugger, all right? And ensure that you don't have any Windows uh, updates 
that he's spending. All right. Then again, disable win, uh, Windows Defender and Firewall. And after this, by the time you start your analysis, before you start your analysis, uh, make sure that you take a, a snapshot of the base system before you do any analysis on a file infected with a malware. All right. Now, um, I want to show us a, a, a particular tool that is used for uh, it's, it's a it's called CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike Falcon Anti Malware. All right. So let me let me uh, share my my uh, hold on, please. Okay. Sorry, just give me let, me, let me try and log in. Let me log in. That's timed me out. That's security for you. <laughs> Okay, so while um, while my um, while my screen is trying to come up, or I want to show us something, um, I mentioned uh, three uh, principles in information security. Uh, what are they? All right, I want somebody to tell me what uh, those three uh, principles of information security. It's very basic. All right. Maybe we'll have a winner today. Maybe we'll have a winner today. So what are the principles, the three principles of information security? Just drop your answers in the chat. All right. Drop your answers in the chat. Drop your answers in the chat. Yes. Drop your answers in the chat. Yes, Olasu Komi says CIA. Yes, very good, very good. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Thank you very much for for that. All right. So um. Okay, my screen is up now, but like I said, I I will be I will limit the information I'm going to show us. All right, malware detections. Okay. Because this is I'm making I'm making it of a live uh, a live environment, all right. So I'll be limited to what I can show us. But when we when we when we um, get to the class, all right, the cyber security class, we are going to. I have a lab, all right. So that's why I, I've mentioned the uh, the requirements. What we need to set up, uh, uh, set up uh, our environment for malware analysis, all right. So we we'll have a. Is that like we use a virtual box or a VM? We have a sandbox. We have uh, the particular file itself that has um, that has a malware in it, and it's preferably a, a Windows Seven. OS that we're going to use for that uh, our practical class. All right. So, um, okay. So let me share my screen now. I think it's it's fine now. Let me share my screen now. I think it is. I pray. All right. So this is this is um, this solution is called CrowdStrike, and um, what it does basically is that you know um, it has capability of not just detecting, but it can also uh, block uh, that a, a malware. You know, like I said, a malware can be sitting on 
Uh, so, so CrowdStrike is an EDR. It's an endpoint. It's an endpoint detection and response kind of uh, solution. And what it does basically like, is going to detect a malware in your system, be it your laptop, be it your workstation. It picks that uh, that uh, that malware, and then it does what we call a quarantine. All right, it quarantines the malware. You understand? So a weed that for me as a security person, what I just do, I can just pick that that incident. And what I do is that I will just analyze it. All right. So that is, is basically what you are seeing. Uh, we are seeing now. So this is what a machine learning identified high confidence malicious file. So this is a malicious file. Now, if I go deep into it, it will tell me the path, but I may not be able to show you all of those information. It will show you the path, all right? The particular uh, system that has an infected uh, file in it, all right? All right? Uh -huh. So it will tell me the path. It will tell me the particular host, all right? And it will tell me the steps that I will need to, to do what? To take out. But of course, it has blocked it. It has blocked it. It, it, it does both prevention and also it does a remediation as well. So... Uh, so if you go down, if you go down, you can see uh, detect on right hardware uh, PUP ash. Okay, so this ash, uh, okay, you can you can you can block the ash. We have uh, what we call the indicators of compromise IOCs. When you have uh, IOCs like this, what you do basically is that you block it, you block it, so that when, whenever uh, whenever that kind of uh, and uh, when, whenever that kind of uh, 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 compromise is coming to your environment again, it's just it it won't uh, come into any of your any of your system. So you have various kinds of detections, all right? Various kind of detections, all right? So um, when we get to class, when we get to class, we will do uh, proper stuff. But uh, let me stop here. Let me stop here. Let me stop here. All right. Let me stop here. So. I want to encourage us take advantage take advantage take advantage and register for the class and i will see you in class thank you very much and have a blessed uh evening thank you over thank to you, you. Olawale. thank you so much that was a very very interesting one please guys can we give him a round of applause in the chat please just a big round of applause for you can use the emotion, the emojis here. Thank you so much for your wealth of knowledge. I would share my screen again now, just to take us through the rest of the slides. And um, thank you so much, Alibaba. Yeah, thank you, Olawale. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So I would go through the rest of the slides quickly and. Um, Again, I want to I want to show you why you should become a cybersecurity expert. Yeah, there, there's been an increase in there's an increase in the production of global digital data. You can imagine the amount of data that has gone back and forth just for the past one hour that we have been on this meeting. So therefore, the the amount of cyber attacks that is going to happen in the near future is expected to quadruple. And organizations would all, always need cybersecurity experts to prevent um, these attacks from happening. So that is why some of you are on this call. That is why, so you're, you're taking a very great um, decision, a very, very interesting career path, a very meaningful career path. If you if will be a little emotional about this, there are some people that in the, in the near future, they'll probably be losing their total earnings, whatever it is they've been working for all their life, someone can just come one day and take it all, all away from them. But with you as a cybersecurity expert, you might be able to at least save as many people as possible from, from this kind of malicious attacks. So this is why I would like you to join us at Analytics. Let's take you through the ropes. Um, Adit Dolako will be glad to pour in his years of experience into you in in four months, 
in a four month program such that you'll be able to um, get ready for a job. It's easy for you to start learning on your own and you keep learning here, learning there. Uh, but if with, the, with mentorship for someone who has been through the ropes, they can actually show you what you actually need to learn to become ready for, for a job. Now, I'd like to also show you some of the other um, courses that we offer at Tenalytics. And I will tell you the reason why we selected these courses for people to learn. Number one is the ease of learning. Yeah. We don't want to delve into too much technicalities in, in, in I mean, in, in, there are some courses in tech that imagine you want to be, uh, um, you want to probably do some software development and all of that. You probably be writing a lot of code and need a lot of um, time getting into it. But we have selected courses that's actually easy for, for anybody to just quickly join and learn one or two things. Um, another thing is the ease of transitioning and getting a job. You have intentionally selected programs that you can easily find a job after um, completing them, meaning there are opportunities that are ab so much abound in these programs that you can easily find something to do immediately. And again, they are highly rewarding. I'm going to show you in the next few slides, few slides some of what the annual um, pay is like for people that are in, this, in these roles. The courses that we have presently, we have business analysis, we have data analytics, we have financial analytics, HR analytics, we have full stack data science, we have data engineering, Scrum Master Professional, cybersecurity that um, we just discussed now, and then we have AI engineering. These are courses that are very, very easy to learn. You'd be surprised how much you can learn in, in four months. Not just four months, three months of learning, one month of internship, where you actually do real life projects. See, for some of these courses, you can do a master's for, for a year or two years, and you keep learning and learning and learning, but the universities won't teach you what you actually need to do the job. But we have been able to design a curriculum such that within three months, we teach you what you actually need to know to get it, to land your first job. And the next one month, you actually do real life projects. If you want to apply for any job now, it's not about your, say, your the number of certificates you have. It is what can you actually do. So in four months, we teach you what you need to know to land a job. And then one month, we actually give you real life projects that you can do and present to any employer like, this is what I can do. So it's not about what they told you in the textbook, but what you have actually done. So we have been able to curate our, our program such that we make this easy for you. And the honest truth is, it always seems impossible until it's done. Um, I remember last year, December, not 2022 now, 2022 December, I told myself that I've spent so much time being a, a digital marketing professional. I want to delve more into data because I realize data has become so important aspect of any, any form of career you want to do. I wanted to add a lot more data analytics experience into my marketing background. And I took, the, I took on the journey by January, 2023. And by December, I could confidently say I'm a, I'm a marketing data analyst. It's because I thought about it. It felt impossible, but I I took the journey and and yeah, I'm today. I can confidently tell you how much you need to spend to get a certain amount when you are running a marketing campaign. I can tell you by data which part of your marketing campaign you need to fix, which one you need to optimize, or which one you need to even drop totally. There are also this is just a personal story. There are other interesting stories here I would like to share with you. Um, it's easy to get one or two people to, to get you a testimonial. But when you have over 850 people giving testimonial, then you know this is not a fluke. It is what we have tried over and over, and it works. Um, this is um, Olua Tosi here. He's a, a fraud analyst in the UK. Um, he's, he joined our program. He followed up 
on the mentorship program. Then we have the in interview prep um, that we do for our participants. I'm going to talk more about that later. Then we have Ikmat here. Ikmat was a full-time mom. She she been taking care of our children for for about four years. No job at all. She didn't do any. But then she joined our program, and within four months, she got a job with NHS in UK and a full visa sponsorship as well. Maybe I should just play one of these so that you would uh, have an idea. Sorry, hello, can you hear me? Good evening. Yes. Okay, so there's no sound. I don't know if you can share to the sound also. Oh, okay. Um, let me just move on to the screen. Well, you can hear what I'm saying. Yes, I can hear what you're saying. Okay, so. Um, okay, so. Um, Sorry about that, guys. I didn't know you couldn't hear me. So we're going to be sharing these slides. I'll just run through the experiences of some of these guys. And you can always watch the videos at your own time. Yeah, this is um, Tommy, Temi Vaughan. He's a lawyer, now a business analyst. And after he attended our programs, um, Ramat here is a business analyst in the UK after training with us. He also got a full visa sponsorship. Um, we have a whole lot of them here. This is being guy in Poland. After two years of being unemployed in Poland, after our programs, he got about two different roles um, as a business data analyst in, in Poland. Also, Nathaniel um, is working with the largest private research pharmaceutical firm in Barcelona. Um, also, a data scientist. We have um, Michael Oseyemi here, we have Idris. We have a whole bunch of people here from different parts of the world that got their first job um, after training with Tenalytics. Now, let me show you how you can get into any of these career paths with Tenalytics, which is quite straightforward. As a business analyst, for instance, a business analyst is, they act as the bridge between business stakeholders and the technical team ensuring effective communication and and the aid understanding and understanding of requirements meaning whatever it is is a problem that a business has 
they are able to learn from the business owners and transfer that to um, the technical people, the developers, data analysts, and what have you, and be able to bridge that gap, making sure that that problem is solved. Yeah. What's an average salary of a business analyst, for instance, um, in, as it is right now? In the UK, you will be earning up to 52,000 pounds, over 52,000 pounds as a business analyst in the UK. In Canada, over $74,000. And then in the US, over $85,000 is what you'll be earning as an average annual salary for a business analyst. This is a, these are the key learnings you need to... This, programs are actually broad in real life, but we have been able to select what you actually need as the basis for you to be able to get a job. We are not teaching you to learn and get to masters and do PhD and all the likes. Learn what you need to actually do your day-to-day -day job um, as a business analyst. Excel, Power BI, SQL, you'll be learning process mapping, project initiation planning, Agile and Scrum for projects, software development life cycle, requirement fundament, requirements, fundamentals, elicitations, stakeholder analysis and engagement, then chat GPT for business analysis. So after all of this program, it takes about four months, but for business analysis and also data engineering, which I'll get to shortly, you learn for two months. And for two months, you'll be learning practicals, meaning you'll be an intern with us and the advantages of being an intern with us, I'm going to share that with you also shortly. For two months, you're going to manage a web application. Development. So it's a real life. You have the feel of your in the office working and getting a project done. Yeah. So, and this is what actually employers are looking for. Someone that can do the work and so on. Not someone who knows so much or can speak so many English. For data analytics, a data analyst is responsible for analyzing and interpreting data to generate insight and support data-driven decisions. And a data analyst is someone that can be able to look at data and be able to um, read that data, analyze it, and present it to the technical and non-technical stakeholders. Yeah. For instance, if I use myself as, as, a, as a study, if I want to report to my boss, I can tell my boss how much we need to spend in the next few months to get a certain result, yeah, as he is non-technical. But on the, on the technical side, with my team members, I can tell them based on the traffic that is going on on the site, this is what they need to focus more in terms of feature development. Now, talking to a software developer or maybe my web developer, I can able to use data to tell him, okay, people are visiting our sites from a, a from iPhones more than Android. Therefore, whatever it is you are developing, optimize it for, for, for an iPhone. So I'll be able to use that data that I get to communicate to the non-technical and the technical stakeholders to improve the whole business um, environment or achieve a, a general business goal. So an average of 40,000 pounds is what a data analyst earns in the UK. In Canada, about 64, over $64,000. And in the US, over $72,000 annually is what um, you earn as a data analyst in these um, countries. So what are the key learnings? What are the basics you need to learn for you to do your day-to-day -day activities as a data analyst? First, you have to have the problem-solving mindset. And then problem-solving mindset doesn't mean um, uh, maybe you create problems or there are, you look at data, identify problems, and how you can solve those problems. So how to do this in, with, with basic steps is what we'll first teach you, then show you how to use tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Tableau. You also be able, have to be able to tell stories with data. You need to be able to present your data in such a way that it's compelling enough for your, for your stakeholders to be able to make decisions. I could have data and not be able to present it well enough to convince my web developer that, okay, I should be developing a mobile, um, mobile version of our product first before the desktop, or telling my boss that I need to get some more money to push a marketing campaign. I need to be able to tell a story with my data. If not, then I wouldn't move forward with that project at that point in time. Then also we'll be teaching you how to use ChatGPT for analytics. Then there's also Microsoft Fabric for, for analytics. 
Microsoft Fabric is actually very new, and it's in its um, it's in its in its um, demo stage. So, but it's something we you already know how to how to make good use of, and we'll be teaching you in class. So, when you get out there, you will probably be one of the very few people that know how to use this tool for data analytics. This is also running for four months. You learn all that you need to know in three months, and for for one month, you'll be you'll be doing about six different projects that will give you hands on experience. So, it's not about what you know, but what you can actually do, which is what will get you the job that you. That you that you need that you require. Now, now the next one here is the HR analytics. So this is a this is like um, a follow through on data analytics. Now you are using your data analytics skills to help optimize HR processes, employment performance, and talent talent um, management. So as it, an HR anal analyst, you are able to um, do all of these things around employee data. So average salary for an HR analyst in, in the UK is 32,000. In Canada is over 71,000. And in the US is over 62,000. And also like, just like almost close to data analytics, you'll be learning problem solving, Excel, Power BI, SQL. Then there are few, few modules that are specific to data, I'm mean, sorry, to HR analytics, which is HR analytics and performance evaluation, HR metrics and life cycle, HR analysis and data and dashboarding, then collaboration and report automation and, and the likes. This also runs for four months. Three months, you'll be learning all the tools, all the basics you, you, you need to, to do your job. And then one, one month, you would, would create an environment for you where you actually apply all that you know in real life projects that you can add on to your portfolio and share with potential employers. Then you have financial analytics also. Yeah, you're managing, evaluating financial data to provide insights um, to improve your the company's financial performance, support decision making for the financial department and the um, executive management in total. Also, here you see the um, the average salary in the UK, Canada, and the US for um, a typical financial analyst. The key learning areas, if you notice. Program solving is still a key point here. Excel, Power BI, SQL, accounting fundamentals, financial analysis, financial modeling. This is a very key, key one. Then valuation, sensitivity, and scenario analysis. analysis and of course, chat GPT for anal uh, analytics. This is also a four months program. In four months, you compress whatever it is probably would learn in, in years, you compress all of that in four months with our tailored mentorship um, approach to, to learning. And within three months, you learn what you need to know. One month, we'll follow through on, on projects with you. You learn with your team members as a group and as individuals. You do several projects, present those projects. We tell you what you need to improve on them. You go back and refine it. This project, these are, if, if you're sending out your CV, you can send out your CV as, as yourself and that's it. You have beautiful certifications and all of that. But if you can't show them what you can actually do with all the knowledge you have, then most people would throw that CV somewhere. So that's the advantage of the one month internship that we do to Meaning you have one month to actually do real life work, work in a real life scenario, real tools that you would actually use on the job. We, we share these tools with you and, and make you use them to do real life projects. So you can actually have a portfolio along with your CV. And that puts you in a better position than someone who is just sending out a CV. Now, the next one here is data science. Basically, as a data scientist, you're using your data to the data you have to create um, to build predictive mod models or machine learning um, to define machine learning te techniques. Ideally, this is something um, that covers a, a whole lot of data analytics, but the predictive part of this is now that you're able to use data to determine what the future could look like. For instance, in weather, data scientists use weather data to determine if there will be tomorrow will be rainy or it should be sunny. 
in other aspects, in marketing, for instance, I can use as a data scientist, I could use data to define how much of a product I would like to sell in the near future based off the past data that I have. So I can use that to inform my, my manufacturer that, okay, please, I want you to give me um, a particular color of shirt because from my data, it shows that I, I've been able to predict that in the near future, I'm going to sell more of this or maybe produce more of cardigans for me because I'll be able to sell more of it based on the data that I have or historic data that I have. So that's more like what data science looks like. But then you'll be meeting with industry experts who are going to be teaching you a, lot, a whole lot more on how to use some of these things. In UK, you'll be earning up to 50K as a data scientist. In Canada, over $94,000. And then in the US, over 121 as an average for a data scientist. You'll be learning statistics, forecasting, and predictive analysis using Microsoft Excel. You'll be learning how to use Tableau for data analytics, SQL, Python. you learn some Python programming for um, data science, exploratory data analysis, machine learning, computer vision. Then GitHub, you also learn how to learn GitHub version control and text. Then chat GPT and GitHub profiler for coding. You'll be writing a little bit of code here. So for some of you that are interested in, um, in code, but not so much that you, you get lost in it, but enough for you to be able to, to perform your daily duties as a data scientist. Then of course, Microsoft Fabrics again comes into play here. So this is also a four months program. Three months will learn, we teach you what you actually need to learn to do your job when you get one, and then one month internship to build your portfolio, to be able to add to your CV. Then we have the data engineering course also. Now, the, all the data that the data analyst needs to, to make their analysis, all the data that the data scientist needs to, um, to make their predictive analysis, they have to get that data from, so from somewhere. That is where the data engineer comes in. He is the one that now builds the structure where the data is kept. He finds out the data is structured and gathered in different ways so that, um, and the way the data is transferred to the data analyst and the data scientists to be able to make the, the intelligent decisions that they make. So for this role also, the average you'll be earning if you're in the UK is about 50,000 um, pounds. In Canada, over 94,000 pounds, and in the US, over 121,000 um, dollars, rather, um, in the US. The key learning areas, these are the key learning areas that you need to, the things you need to learn as a data engineer. And once you have the knowledge of all of this, any other thing that you'll be learning will be personal learning just for self development. Yeah, it, is, it has nothing to do, it's not, you're not stressing yourself so much. So we teach you what you need, basic, that any job at all, you are able to get your hands on and, and, and get so This is also a four month program, three months learning and one month internship. Then of course, Scrum Masters. So this is, this is more like the future of project management. I'm sure you've learned about project management or you've been hearing about it over time. It's something that is applicable even outside tech. But then Scrum Masters, they're like, they like the, if, if let me, this, the idea here is like, say you are like the class captain in a way. You are the one that makes sure everything is moving on fine. You are able to define the end before it starts and able to walk back from there. So if there is a project, you already envision what the project will look like. If there is an app to be developed, you already thought about what you want the app to do, what is going to look like, what the user experience is going to be. And then you're able to trace back to the beginning and how you're able to work with your teams and all of that. So we'll teach you the basics of um, Scrum, introduction to Scrum, Scrum team and artifacts, um, the Scrum events, Nexus scale Scrum, preparation for the PSM examination to be a Scrum professional. So this is actually also a four months program. And in two months you'll be learning and then internship for with real life projects. This way you also learn and be, at this point, you're able to also learn with other parts of the program. People from data science, people from data engineering, able to manage them in a real life project and add that to your portfolio as a strong professional. 
Then, of course, cybersecurity that that Adi Delacro has done justice to um, so far. And um, so I wouldn't draw too much on this. So why you should train with analytics? I'm going to give you a few insights why you should choose analytics. There are a lot of programs out there where you can learn um, some of these courses, but there is none that does a few things that analytics does. And I'll tell you those things shortly. Um, so in the past, in 2023, we're able to help over 850 people transition from the classroom to their first tech career. If you go to our YouTube page, you should see over 200 testimonials of students that have gone from classroom into their first job in the UK, in the US and Canada and Europe and, the, and, and the Asia and the likes. These are people that most of them do not have any experience in tech. If we have lawyers, we have doctors, we have people that, have, that do not have anything to do at all with tech, but they went from, from nothing in four months, they have enough confidence to go into their first tech job. I'll show you how we're able to do this. First, we have an up-to-date curriculum. Most of our facilitators are professionals. They are not, they are not, I wouldn't say they are, they are not full-time professionals. I'm sorry, facilitators in the sense that it's not all they do. They do their own job also. So they are actually active on their job. They, they are updated on what you need to know. So they, they update the curriculum per class. Yeah, if you were in a class two years ago or three years ago, or maybe six months ago, if you come to the same class now, because tech is everly changing, our curriculum is updated. It will feel like you probably didn't even learn anything in the past class because the curriculum is always up to date. And that's only that's one of the few ways you can stay ahead in tech. And this applies generally across the board. You can't sit back in tech and be like, okay, I already know it, or I already have a certification and you're good. You just have to keep updating, keep learning, keep keep up to um, up to speed with, with because technology is changing. Before you know tomorrow, there's something that is that's changing the world. For instance, about two, three years ago, nobody was talking AI. But right now, if you're not if you're not up to date with AI and able to apply it in your job, in the next five years, you probably just be left behind. Then also, like I said, we have industry experts, people that are working, that have on the job experience. They are the ones that would actually take you through our programs. Then we have blended training to accommodate everyone. I will explain how this works. We have um, watch me doing videos, and then we have live classes, and this happens on weekend. The watch me doing videos, basically, they, um, they are videos that you can go back to at any time. For some people that probably don't have time to, um, maybe you don't have time to come to class, or maybe you couldn't listen when you were in class or pay good attention in class. We have Watch Me Do It videos where you can now play and whatever it is that you're supposed to learn, you can follow through in that video and be able to do everything step by step. You can pause, play, and follow through to learn what you actually need to do, practicals only. Then we have the additional employability services. This is actually a very interesting one alongside the internship program. And I'll go through those in details um, in the next slide. With all of these things, a combination of um, all of this that I've mentioned is actually going to get you ready for um, a, professional, a professional tech career. Now, how do we position you for success in the job market? And we have this done in a three-layered approach. Um, the first level is we have the CV review sessions. For a lot of people, I've seen, I've seen a lot of interesting CVs in my career. About a few days ago, I sent out, um, I posted a role on, on LinkedIn and the amount of CVs I got, like very interesting, interesting, interesting CVs. But I don't care. Some of them might might be able to do the job, but from the CV alone, I, I was it was easy for me to just throw out more than fifty percent of what I saw. So this is the first thing that gets you through the gates in any job. So we actually show you how to review your CV, do this with you one on one, and make sure your CV is tailored with the exact keywords that would get you through the um, through the door to get your first interview. Then there's the LinkedIn optimization. Your LinkedIn account is 
people have interesting IG accounts, interesting TikTok, but their LinkedIn is actually not nothing to write home about. But these are the things that a recruiter would actually, in fact, if your LinkedIn is optimized well enough, um, recruiters would themselves find you and offer you roles at, or interview opportunities. Then also Upwork, if you're interested in, in, in freelance opportunities to develop your skills and all of, and the likes, you can, you can register on Upwork and would help you to optimize that also such that you are able to get opportunities. All, most of the freelance opportunities I've gotten has, has been on Upwork and it's been an interesting one. Then navigating the job market will show you the right places that you need to actually go to to find opportunities. So you don't, you don't just scramble around there. Then there's also this new program that we just introduced where we're able to help you track how many jobs you apply to and then be able to follow through on those opportunities. Then there's the job interview and preparation, the job and interview preparation. This is this is something you wouldn't get anywhere else. I can say that with, with my full mouth. Once you get an opportunity for an interview, you are going to send that opportunity to us and and sorry, you're going to send that job description to us. We are going to look through it and then we'll prepare an interview session with you where we'll ask you the likely questions that you would hear from the recruiter and that way you're able to practice. Yeah, you're able to practice what you will say to your to the recruiter. That way, when you get to the to the um, to the interview, you have your your chances of passing through that interview is increased because you already prepared you ask you questions. So we have people in now that you will share new calls with that would actually run through all of this with you, and you can always come as many times as you have um, an interview to prepare for. Then finally is the recommendation letter. So that's the idea for the internship that I mentioned earlier. So if you're coming from medicine, for instance, or you're formerly a lawyer, or you're probably a caregiver, and then you're transitioning to data science, yeah, you would need to give some reference to, to show that you, would, you are able to, um, to do the job. So I haven't gone through our program, done the one month internship, built your portfolio, and you actually need a recommendation letter that you can actually do the job. Analytics is going to do that for you. You can't get that on Coursera. You can't get that on Udemy or anywhere else. Analytics will actually vouch for you that, okay, this person has gone through our programs. They've done internship with us. They can defend what's on their portfolio. They are good to go and would back you up. And that makes it easy. I think that's one of the things that makes it easy for a lot of our students to get their first job. Then the second level to this is that there are weekly mentorship. So even after the program or during the program, there are weekly mentorship sessions where we we'll, we'll run you through what you need to do to prepare you for, for your job. So mentorship is generally important in every aspect of life, as far as I'm concerned, in your finances, in your spiritual life, in, your, in, in marriage and what have you. Mentorship is when you have mentors to show you how to do things, they, they cut the, the journey short for you. You don't have to make their mistakes. You don't have to. So we make sure we organize these mentorship sessions weekly for people who want, who are interested in personal development and want to actually shorten their journey to tech. So these sessions happen from time to time. We share our knowledge with you. We bring in, we invite experts in the industry to share their knowledge experience with you so that you don't have to spend years like they did. In a few months, you're able to learn fast enough to get ready for a, for a job then on the job support. So when you get the job, we don't leave you and let you to it. On the job, you can always still reach back. We are able to tell, tell you things you need, you need to know. There are people that have gotten jobs and then they see things that they've not seen before because they just they were able to make it through the interview, get the job, but then they are seeing new stuff. They can always reach back to us and we we'll assign someone to them to actually tell them what they need to do to get through it while on the job. So they're still on the job support. And with all of this, we are able to assure you that within your first month of completing our training, you can be guaranteed of a job interview. You can't, you can't do your CV right, do it properly, do your LinkedIn, optimize it well, clear up your upwork and do it, optimize it well. Show, we show you how to navigate your job, um, the job interview, show you, prepare you for interviews, get your recommendation letter, follow up on the mentorship session, then you are guaranteed of a job interview after 
after you follow through on all of these processes. This, this is something that you wouldn't get anywhere else. But we're able to fix all of it together to make sure that you are ready and you can be able to, as much as you apply, be able to, uh, to actually get an interview and follow through on it. Then also, let me speak basically on the growth internship that I mentioned about. It's an opportunity to put you um, to is the, the opportunity to put all the concepts that you have learned in class in practice in real life projects and scenarios. So with this one month internship, it gives you the ability to accelerate your career. We we equip you with the prerequisites for for a work experience so that you can actually be able to say, oh yes, I have enough experience to um, to do the job. Yeah, so that's the essence of this growth internship program. And like I said, you hardly find it. I have personally not seen any other training institute that offers something like this. And the whole essence of this is to make you stand out, yeah, and provide you some level of exposure in that industry because you can actually say you were an intern at put that on your CV, like you were an intern with, um, with analytics. And how does it work? We give you real life projects. You spend your time learning about the field, networking with industry experts. They help you solve projects and develop and um, both add and soft skills in the process of this. So um, you can always add this to your CV. It's a one month for you to own your skills. Um, you, you project, you have a spot that will actually review your project. So you're not just doing the project for the sake of doing it. You're doing it as someone is reviewing, it's someone like literally your boss reviewing your project to tell you, okay, this is what you need to do better. This is what you're not doing right. And all of this is um, gives you that sense of, of prepares you or gives you that readiness to actually go on for um, a job. Now, these are things that we've been doing for past three years now, but then there are new additions for 2024. And one of them is the body mentorship of, in this, um, in this program, we are inviting those that have gotten jobs to come and actually mentor students and tell them what their experience has been like, been like in real life and able to build that connection, give them that confidence that they need to actually move faster in their journey. Then also we have enhanced our internship experience. So for instance, our business analysis and data engineering is no more just one month of internship but two months so that they can actually get deeper experience into um, how things work in the real life environment. So they build end-to-end -end projects and they have deliveries on a weekly basis and they are accountable to someone, yeah? So this business analyst will work on web development projects. So you have to you work on a real project that will be used by someone, not, not some project you will work and then throw somewhere. Projects, you have a lineup of projects that we need people to work on. So you, one of those that will work on those projects, will give the software developers to work with, Scrum Masters and other key stakeholders. Then finally, we are partnering with recruitment agencies in the UK, US, and then in Canada, so that once you are done, we won't leave you out there searching for jobs on your own. Some of these recruitment agencies would always let them know that we have students, uh, these are our best students in this cohort, and we actually just literally hand you over to them for these recruitment agencies to, to get you the, the best job as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, this is, this is also, focused on um, um, people that are, that this is focused on people that are actually um, going to be starting our, our course from, that started our course actually from January, but then people from the past course who can also take advantage and learn from it. So um, if there's a saying that, how much does it cost to, what's the cost of education? I say, if you're asking, saying education is too expensive, then maybe you should try ignorance. At this point, I'd like to share with you the cost of our programs. And the truth is, I have, uh, within my authority as a CMSO, I have discounts for about 20 people on this call before um, we end this conversation here. So if you'd be one of the 20, just type in yes in the chat, and I'm going to take note of your name and make sure you enjoy this discount. Um, so for the data analytics, business analysis, HR, financial analytics, and data science, the cost is going for 750. But like I said, on this call, if you 
drop in your info and make the payment on this call or in the next 24 hours, you're going to, you can pay 600, yeah? And even the 600, you can split it into, you can, you can pay in 450 now, $450 to um, secure the discount. And then by the end of the first month into the program, you can actually pay the 150 that's left. If you're paying in pounds, you can pay 375 right now before we leave this call. And then you can balance up 125 by the end of the first month. And if you're paying in Naira, of course, you can pay 720. This is for the first 20 people, please. Um, after the first 20, to go back to 900 for, I mean, if you're paying in Naira, 625 pounds if you're paying in in, in euros, I'm oh, sorry, in pounds. And then if you are paying in dollars, you're paying 750. But if you are doing the cyber security and the data um, engineering programs, you're paying 750 if you're taking advantage of the discount we're giving here. And 625 pounds if you're paying in pounds and 900 if you're paying in Naira. So you can also split that payment, yeah? You can split that payment into installments. Use this um, five fifty here for data engineering and cyber security. Five fifty dollars to hold that spot, and then you can always balance up within your first month of joining the program. Then for Scrum Master, that's going for four twenty. Its original price is five twenty, but it's going for four twenty. Um, if you are paying right on this call. And then your first payment, you can make 300,000 and then 120. And if you're paying in dollars and, um, and paying in pounds, these are the amount you can pay within the next 24 hours. In fact, if you're paying on this call, maybe I can give you more discount, but um, in the, within the next 24 hours, you should make this payment as to, to secure your discount. And then within the first month, you can um, balance up the payment. You can take a screenshot of this so that you could take a good look at it at your own time and um, follow through from there. This is a link um, to make payments. You can, um, my colleagues on this call will share this on the chat if you want to make that payment right now. So, like I said, the discount is for the next 24 hours and for the first 20 people. So if you're interested, Please go ahead and do make that payment immediately. This is an investment you'll be making into your into your future. And um, if I were you, I wouldn't think twice about it. Since you've already on this call and made it this far, it means you're actually interested. And compared to the results or the gains that you'll be getting from it, I think is what's um, going ahead to uh, make that investment. The truth is, someone asked me one time that he's already in his he's already in his mid forties, and why should he be investing in all of this? Or what are the chances of him um, being a data analyst when he's already forty five? And I told him that in the next fifty years, sorry, in the next ten years, you are going to be fifty five. You can actually be fifty five and be a data scientist with 10 years experience in the next 10 years, or you will also be 55 in the next 10 years without any knowledge. So think about that for a second. Yeah? 55 in the next 10 years, without any experience, without any knowledge, no investments in your future, or 55 in the next 10 years, with 10 years of experience as a data analyst. Now look at the average for someone who is an entry level to a, a course in data analysis. But then with 10 years experience, imagine how much you've been earning. This is also um, a, a more success stories by some of our participants. I would also be sharing a link in the chat for, um, to watch some of these videos and see and hear from some of these uh, participants. So the next course is coming up in February. I would encourage you to join and um, you'll be glad you did. So like I said, the discount is for the first 20 people to register. 
or people that register within the next 24 hours. And you can actually reach me at um, olawale at tenalytics.org. Immediately you make payment so that I can ensure that um, your, your discount actually applies. Let me go back again to this slide so you can take a screenshot of this. Then my colleagues are going to share this link um, for you to actually make payments. Maybe I can just run you through what that links look like now. So this is the enrollment center. So if you want to make payments, yeah, okay, you see I have the information here. With this link, once you make payments, you come here to upload your receipts. Um, that way we're able to process your discount. So we have the um, pound account details here. Um, if you're paying in Naira also, okay, if you're paying in, in pounds, um, if you want to make a full payment or part payment, you can click on any of this. For the data analysis program and likes, let me choose one for instance. If you're making a part payment, you select this, it will take you to the, um, to the main stack store. And here you can actually select how much you want to pay. Reserve your seat and make your payment either by uh, with your with pay stack. Um, I'll go back to the other one, the main stack. So from here again, um, if you want to pay in dollars, also if you want to pay in naira, you can use this um, link here. Or you want to do a direct transfer, you can transfer to our Fidelity Bank account. And once you make that payment, you come to this link and then upload, click here to upload your receipts. So this is going to open um, a Google Doc where you enter your name, the type of payment you made. Is it a full payment or, or the first payment? Or you maybe you maybe when you come back later to make a balance payment, then you can pick things up from here. Let me follow through the part of this. So this is my email, you can see. So reach out to me immediately, you make payments, and I can help you follow through on your discount. So here you enter your details. So along this line, you upload your payment receipts. So I can use that to follow through on your payments. Um, so I don't know at this point, I would like to take any questions or um, any questions that you have for me or for Adi Tolako, I'll be glad to answer them. So I don't know if you have any questions. Um, data, X, Y, okay. Um, Ebele, can you please unmute the person that raised their hand so they can ask their question? Yes, bring that. Okay, basically, I'll mute now. Okay, um, I was following keenly uh, the masterclass, and uh, there was something the facilitator mentioned when he was talking about. Uh, Nigeria Data Protection Act. You made mention of um, a certain um, charge that was we made regarding was it 10 million or 2%, whichever one is higher. I was trying to find out what that exact, uh, what he was talking about. If you can go back there and give me clarity, I'll really appreciate it. Okay, um, are you still on the call? Yes, I I'm still on the call. Yeah, please. I'm still on can the you call. answer the question? Okay, so um, the Nigeria, it used to be uh, NDPR, Nigeria Data Protection Regulation. But uh, okay. the, yes, so when uh, it's now an act, okay, so meaning that uh, the, the, it, it's, a, uh, the federal government is, is giving a attention, all right, to data protection. You know, uh, the, our NDPR is uh, just like what you have uh in the gdpr that's the european union 
uh, GDPR for uh, okay. EU countries. All right. So, uh, so there is sanction for, for any data controller. Data controller in this case, they are organizations that handle uh, uh, data, customer data. All right. Okay. As long as you process, uh, you handle uh, customer data. You are meant to ensure that uh, there is uh, there is no data breach. In fact, if there is a data breach, you are required by regulation to report it. Any kind of data okay. breach, yes. So um, it's 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 quite a lot. It's quite a lot. But I was talking about uh, the the fines. All right, that yes. comes with uh, that come with uh, data breaches. So what I was saying is, if a data controller that handles customer data, you also have um, data processor. Those are um, maybe your third parties, your third party vendors that process data on your behalf. You, you have, they, too, okay. they have to comply with data regulation, data protection regulation. But for you okay. as a data controller. If you are not compliant with data protection uh, regulation, data protection act, you are you can be penalized, all right, okay. up to a maximum of two percent of your uh, your total revenue. So if your okay. total revenue is let's say two hundred million, that means that you'll be paying two percent of two hundred million. million. Yes, which is your and not your profit. That's your annual. It's like your total, your total sales or total revenue, as it, as the case may be. So you are okay. you are going to pay a two percent of that annual gross revenue. That's revenue of the previous year, not the current year of the previous year, because okay. the assessment is usually done on last year uh, records on the previous year records. So it's either you pay two okay. percent of your annual gross revenue. Or you pay a sum of ten million naira, naira. whichever okay. one is higher. Is higher. Okay. So if two percent so, of your annual gross revenue is higher than ten million, that means you pay two percent of two hundred million. That's in the okay. case where your data subjects are more than ten thousand. Okay, your data subject. Yes. When you say data subject, being uh, you say more than or less customer, than ten customer, customer, customer data. If you have customers okay. that you process the data and they are more than 10,000, then this penalty applies to you. But if you if you handle customer data and it is not up to 10,000, all right, you either pay 1% uh, of annual gross revenue or you pay 2 million, whichever is higher. Okay. So as long as you are, you are, you are handling customer data like for example maybe you are an, an insurance company or you are a bank yes. you mm -hmm. understand hey, hey. Mm -hmm. as long as you have customers that log on to maybe they they, they they log on to your application they do all, all manner of stuff on a platform that you have provided for them and they you yes. have some some data about them let's say you have their name the house address their date okay. of birth you know, you have some personal, personally identifiable information, PII, about them. Okay. Then, yeah, you are meant to comply with the data regulation, uh, data protection regulation. So it is a big, it's a big deal today. And uh, in fact, most of all these, uh, all these guys that do uh, all these um, mobile that provide, uh, uh, what do we call them? That loan her uh, loan all this loan loan uh, loan apps loan shops. yeah loan apps okay. yes okay. In fact, there was one that uh, was uh, that faced the news. I'm trying to remember the name of that. Uh, Would that be that. Uh, Soko loan? Yes, God bless you, Soko Soko loan. Okay, they were fined okay. ten million naira. Yes, and I think I saw that on the news one time. Yes, yes, Soko loan. Okay, you are right. So, so it's, but it's you said big, that, yeah, I'm listening. So there are just two more questions I want to ask from what you say. When you say PI, I say PI is first time identifiable information, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Then when you say that data subjects, right? And you say that 10,000, is it 
is this 10,000? Is the 10,000 doesn't make up a data set or is 10,000 clients with their individual data sets? So, data subject, it's a data subject. What it means is that it's either it's a person, any person who can be okay. identified, whether directly As or individual indirectly. person. Yes, individuals. Yes. Okay. So, but when you have a data set of 10,000 entries, more or less. Uh, yes, entities, individuals. Okay, individuals. okay, okay. Individuals. Okay, yes, individuals. okay. I'm trying to wrap my head around it because even when you were explaining it, that was what I missed on the way. And I was like hoping that, you know, I would ask the question, which is why the opportunity came and I said, let me ask it because I want to be very, very sure what it is we're dealing with uh, particularly. Uh, because okay. I won't, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll have to go over this question again. Okay. Um, yeah. You said 10,000 uh, entities or 10,000 individuals. 10,000 individuals. Okay. 10, so, but this, so, okay, but does this, does this apply to government, uh, government entities or is private entities? It's both, both private and uh, uh, you also have, in fact, today, uh, the appointment of uh, data protection officers is not just limited to private institutions. Even the uh, okay. government establishments today, all right, okay. they, are, they, they are not exempted from having a data protection officer. So it's, it's okay. both for private and uh, public entities. Public entities. Okay, yeah. okay. It's all right. Okay, so like, but for instance, not, uh, let me... when I say public entities, I'm not referring to uh some gov some regulators so i'm referring to parastate house uh -huh. okay like for instance now sorry sorry I, I work with the i work with the uh, say a pension commission and we yeah. have a, a pension a pensioners database of over ten thousand would that be considered in this context something like what you're talking about or oh yes yes okay do you have a do, do you have a dpo and by DPO, what do you mean exactly? A data protection officer. Um, I wouldn't know what, what I would put it in that context, but I remember when we okay, were so, the... so a, a data protection officer is someone who is appointed, all right, by the leadership mm -hmm. of uh, that establishment, all right, to protect, to ensure that uh, the, uh, your organization, your institution complies with the regulations of data protection. So that person that, is that, that, that must be that must be the consultant then. Uh, yes, it can be it can be an a, it can be a staff and it can be okay. it can be a it's consultant. So, it's outsourced to a consultant. Uh, yeah, it can be outsourced. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 What 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 uh, what some companies really do is that they find someone who is knowledgeable about it and, yes. they are, and they assign that role to them so in 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 in, in uh, some organizations like banks the CISOs, all right are usually the dpos the where to camps mm -hmm. yes, okay okay camps. okay so, yeah so just to oh, cut costs okay. instead of you getting somebody to 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 employ somebody as a dpo the CISO can okay. as long as the role does not you can't you can't say a marketer now should not become a dpo no they are too no it doesn't really follow Yes. And so it has somebody whose role will not conflict, all right, with that, with the responsibility of a DPO. Okay, okay, okay. okay I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. I'll allow another person ask before I come online again. All right, no problem. Thanks. All right, thank you so much for your question. Um, I don't know if anyone else has questions for myself or for other dollar call. I that All right. So basically, just to reiterate on our achievement of dates, last year alone, we helped over 850 students transition from the classroom to their first tech job. And in, since the existence of Tenalytics, we've helped over 2,000 people transition from the classroom to their first tech job in the UK, US, Canada, Europe, and Asia. And how do we do this? We teach you what you actually need to know to get a job. And then we give you internship programs to give you projects that you work on that you can pre to be present to your recruiter as your portfolio um, to show them that you can actually do the job. And finally, 
we give you recommendation letter to vouch for you that okay, this person is is grilled enough and and good to go. Um, so basically, that's all we have for you tonight. And again, take advantage of the discounts that we have. Oh, we have two participants raised there. And okay, can you please go ahead? Um, maybe if you can unmute them and let them ask their questions. Okay, uh, so I want to find out, I don't know whether I missed it in the presentation, what's the modality of the uh, course or the training? I know it's virtual, is it uh, in the evening? How does it work for other people so that we can know and plan? Okay, so the, the next course starts by February 3rd. So we actually have trainings on, on Saturdays. We have two classes, um, one in the afternoon and one in the evening. Yeah. So on Sundays, we actually send you videos. The Watch Me video, To Do It videos I, I mentioned earlier. The Watch Me Do It video is going to prepare you for the next class. In that video, you the facilitator will take you through what to expect in the, in the coming class. Videos you can actually watch at your own time, follow through on whatever it is you learn. Then on Saturday, you now have a class where with the rest of the students, you can ask the facilitator question, your coordinator asks them questions on the class. He's going to share a screen and show you things that you need to learn right there on the spot. And this will be based off what you have watched in the video for the, during the week. So we we'll do that for, for three months. We we'll take you through all the modules that you need to learn before you now get to do your own project on the um, sorry for personal projects for the one month internship. So basically, it's an online class. Saturdays, afternoon or evening, you can choose whichever one favors you, depending on your time zone. Also, then um, Sundays we send you a video that prepares you for the upcoming class. Meanwhile, during the week also, if there's anything you miss during class, if there's any question you have, we have what we call drop-in sessions. So these are sessions we organize for people, you know, everybody learn at different ways. So dropping sessions are for people that are probably didn't catch up or maybe they had some engagement and didn't catch up really in class. They can, those dropping sessions, you can come with your questions or whatever assignment you've been given. If there is any blocker, you can come to that dropping session to ask your coordinator questions, ask your fellow student questions. And that way everybody learns together and at the same pace. The fast learner, slow learner, average learner. So everybody goes together at the same place. So that's a basic structure of how the learning goes. For three months, then one month is hands-on um, practicals. You build end-to-end -end projects individually and as a team, a, a group that you now present. From your presentation, we give you feedback. This is what you should do better. This is what you need to improve on. This is what you have done very well. And that way you go um, as you go. I don't know if that answers your question, Ma. Hello? Is anyone able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I don't think she's here on the call again. She has left. Okay. So, Ma, I don't know if that answered your question. All right. Um, I think someone else, I, I think I saw two people raise their hands. Who is the next person? You can ask, uh, ask their question also. Okay, I think the person I was asking before, let me give you a second question. Okay, Billy, I can't hear you. So can you hear me now? Yeah, but if you can speak up a bit. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, I've omitted you data one. Okay, okay. So um I I wanted to ask another question actually. I I just finished my data analysis course that we took the last class yesterday, and I just saw this 
present in this uh, master class of uh, uh, cyber security and I'm highly interested. However, I noticed that there are some new, new adjustments to the cyber security, which I believe applies to all other uh, courses in your module. So I was trying to find out because you said something about two months. Sorry, not that, not that one. You thought that said something about partnership with the recruitment agencies and all of that. So would that apply to some of us? Is there a way we can benefit from that, or is just for the rest of us going forward? Who we choose to continue with? You know, uh, yeah, so like for me now, uh, cyber security. So okay, so you mentioned that you've done a program with us before, right? I just took the, the last class uh, yesterday. I'm due for my internship, uh, I think, the following weeks, or the oh, coming awesome. weeks, so to say. So we have an alumni community on LinkedIn. It's actually a very new initiative also. So that alumni okay. community, we try to gather all our old students all in one place. Yeah, and it's an exclusive community where we are going to be sharing some of these things with them. So not just people that are joining newly, but also people that have okay. been through analytics. So we share um share share that alumni community which we share the link to join and then from there you mm -hmm. can actually learn about updates on some of these employment opportunities and you can actually enjoy so it's open to you also i don't know if you have gotten an email in the past about the, the alumni bodies yes okay body maybe since your since not the body mentorship now at the alumni community maybe because you're still a student um, you might not be able to join yet. So we we'll actually give it to alumni, so people who are able to follow through on the program to the end. No. Okay. Yeah. So so you talk to your coordinator, immediately you're done with your internship and you get your certificate, you 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 get a link to join that community immediately. That would be fantastic. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um any more questions? Billy, is there any question in the chat? Probably need to answer. There's no question. All right. So if you're ready to gain a premium technology skill, uh, there is no need to delay. This is just the beginning of the year. There we still have about 11 months to make the year an awesome one, but you have to start now. Yeah, you can visit our website to learn more about analytics. You can shoot an email to inquiries at tenalytics.io. Um, my email is olawale at tenalytics.io or tenalytics.org. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have directly myself. Then you chat us on WhatsApp or, or give us a call on these numbers here. And we'll be happy to, glad to answer any questions you might have. Like I mentioned, the discount is for the first 20 people. And those 20 people, I believe, we should have them in the next 24 hours. So I'd like you to take advantage of it. Once you make your first payment or full payment, please let me know. And um, any other perks that should be added on to that, I'll make sure follow through on it personally and make sure it gets to you. Okay, having said that, I will say thank you for staring this long. Thank you for sharing your time with us. I really appreciate it. Um, Ade Dolapo, I don't know if you have any final words for all right. Um, I just want to um, say, give you guys, just say quotes. All right. And uh, that quote is by Denzel. Uh, you all know him now, the popular Nollywood uh, actor. And this is what he said He said, uh, without commitment, all right, you will never start. And but more importantly, without consistency, you will never finish. There's a Washington, all right? So I want to encourage you guys, take advantage, like uh, my colleagues have said, all right? Start, all right? Start, and uh, by the end of this year, all right, you would have, you too, you would, you would know, you would see for yourself that, you know, you've taken milestones. There will be milestones between uh, the, what you, what you're currently doing and what you would have achieved that by the end of the year, it will be so glaring, all right? You too will know, you will see the returns on your investment. So take advantage and let's start, we start, we start the class by February and then we kick off from there. So thank you very much and good night from me. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Adi So once again, um, 
if you filled the attendance sheet, you are going to get this slide. So you can watch the, go to the slides again. You can watch the testimonial videos that we shared. You can um, use the link to make payments. And also, if you have any questions, you can always check the email, check the website, or check these numbers. So um, reach out to any one of us on the team. I'll be glad to help you through the whole process. So having said that, I would say good night, good morning, um, good afternoon, wherever you are from. And we'll see you again. Bye.